In this very first part of the series, I will show you step by step how to create this pneumorphic soft UI design. And as we do this, I explain you exactly how to create those effects by yourself and how to create them without any efforts. We are inside the web version of Figma. I've created a new project so that we can recreate this soft UI splash screen from scratch. On the right side, you can see the end result, which consists of different elements, and we will work through them from top to bottom. First of all, we need a frame, which has the dimensions of an iPhone 11 Pro. Next, we add a layout grid and choose instead of the grid, the columns. Then we increase that by one, so that we have six columns. And then we add some padding to the left and right side. So just take something like 25. And now we have a better control of the spacing. So whenever you're not sure about the positioning of your elements, you can make use of the grid. And if you don't need it and don't want to display it, you can always turn it off by clicking this eye icon. Next, we are going to implement the notification bar, which you can see at the top of the screen. This is not necessary, so if you don't want to do that, just skip this. But I think this gives the screen a more realistic touch, if you can say so. In order to do that, we need a little text which represents the time. And we need those three little icons which represent the status of our mobile phone. I guess you don't want to see me searching for icons. That's why I prepared everything that we need. So we have this time text and those three status icons. The illustration, which you can see in the center of the screen. And this check mark for the soft UI button at the top and this icon for the small button at the bottom. To get those icons, you can either go to a website which provides icons and illustrations, or you can install the Figma plugins Blush, Font Awesome Icons and Iconify. Let's start with the notification bar. Therefore, I grab the first icon and just place it here on the right side. And now let's check if the spacing is all right by selecting the frame and play the prototype version of this design. And we can see we have to adjust the Y axis of this element. So we select it and now here at the Y axis text box, we adjust it by using, let's say, 20 and now uh, okay let's do 17 and this looks all right so let's go back and add those other icons and put them right aside our first icon with a spacing of five let's review that okay that looks fine last but not least let's take the text and put it on the left side change from regular to medium and select auto width so now let's review that and this looks very nice the notification bar is finished now so let's group those elements together by using a shortcut control g Rename the group to notification bar and you probably should create a component out of that so that you can reuse it. And if you do changes, then those changes will also be applied on the other instances. So you could do that, but for now we will just leave it as a group. Now let's go on by adding a background color to the frame. We can deactivate the layout grid so that we can see the colors and the color will be F1, F2, F6. Next on our list is the soft UI button and therefore we need two circles of the same size which we will stack on each other and we apply 
different kind of drop shadow effects in order to simulate the soft UI effect. So first let's create two circles of the same size. Um, let's say 250, 250 and now I just copy and paste it. Now we have those two circles. The circle which is on the bottom of our stack will get a drop shadow effect with 32 on the x-axis, 32 on the y-axis and 32 of blur. And the color is a slightly darker color than the background of the frame. This is DDDFE8. And let's also set the transparency to 100. And now you can see this very, very slight shadow. The circle which is on the top of the stack will get a similar effect, a drop shadow with the color of white, this time 100. And this one will be the mirrored direction of the first circle. So negative 32 and negative 32 and the blur is the same. And now you can see that the blur or the shadow spreads out into the top left direction whereas from the first one spreads out to the bottom right direction. And that's all the magic behind neomorphic design or soft UI design. You need two shadows which show in the opposite direction and one of those shadows is a little bit darker than the background and one of them is a white shadow that spreads in the opposite direction of the dark shadow. All we have to do now is to change the color of the circles to the background color of the frame. So let's do that. And in order to smooth out the borders, we add some layer blur and we set it to 12. The same goes for the other one. Let's also set this to 12 and now we can put this circle on top of the other one, line it up and our soft UI button is finished. If you're not satisfied with the soft UI effect right now, you can adjust the settings by increasing or decreasing the brightness of the shadows or you can change the blur radius or the spread radius. So just play around with it and you will get used to it very quick. I just recognized that we don't even need the second circle because we can add multiple drop shadows to one circle. So let's add another drop shadow with minus 32, minus 32 and 32. Change the color to white and set it to 100%. And as you can see, the second circle isn't really necessary. If you have a closer look on this button, then you can see this one goes outwards of the surface, but you could also invert it into the inwards direction just by changing the drop shadows to inner shadows. So if we do that, then you see this one looks like it's going inwards. Additionally, we can go one step further and make it look like it's going outwards from the outside and then going inwards from the inside. So therefore, we change the inner shadows back to drop shadows. So now it goes out from the outside and for going inside from the inner area of the circle, we add another inner shadow that shows into the top left corner and has a blur of 32 and it is from a darker color tone and then we add another inner shadow 
which shows into the opposite direction with a blur of 32 as well and the color this time of course is white and now this looks like it's going outwards from the outside and then inwards from the inside. So this is really all the magic that has to happen in order to create those soft UI effects. Now let's go on and remove those inner shadows or just make them invisible so that we have our flat button back. Let's take the check mark and place it in the center of our button. Resize it. This one needs a color of BEB8E1. And now that you know how to create those soft UI effects, you might wonder, is there not an even easier way to apply those shadow effects to your elements? And yes, there is. And this one is a Figma plugin that I already installed. This one is called Neomorphism. And what Neomorphism does, it gives you control over the elevation, the intensity of the shadows, and you can even choose the shape and the direction of the light source. So this check mark should go inwards. That's why we choose this shape. The light source is okay. Let's increase the intensity to let's say 35 and now it looks similar to the one that I've already created. Perfect. Next we take this illustration and resize it and put it into the center and of course we can group those elements so that we can remove this. This one is our soft UI button and let's put it a little bit closer to the top and this one also. Then I add by copy and pasting the create to do's achieve your goals text. Two elements are missing, this get started text and this smaller soft UI button. For the button, let's take this rectangle tool and create a square with a width and height of 70 and a corner radius of 20. The fill is the background color and now we can use the new morphism plugin in order to make this soft and now we have to activate our grid so that we can position this here right on the right side and I deactivate it again and now this one looks pretty good. The button needs this icon so let's place it on top of it, rescale it a little bit larger and the color is this purple shade like this and make sure that it's in the center and yeah now the button is finished. Finally we need the get started call to action text. I just copy and paste it and let's take those elements and reposition it a little bit more to the bottom and I think this one looks pretty good. Check that inside our prototype view and as you can see this one looks very similar to the one that I've already created. I hope you enjoyed this video, if so then leave me a like and if you want to be notified about the upcoming parts of this series then make sure to subscribe to my channel and if you have any questions, then leave me a comment below. And yeah, what else can I say? Have a nice day and hopefully until the next one. In this very first part of the series, I show you step by step how to create this soft UI splash screen. And as we do that, I explain you everything that you need to know in order to create such effects by yourself. And I will show you a way to do that automatically.